Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Friday Business Intelligence Tip. Today's tip uh, was derived this morning, I guess, when I was speaking with a customer of ours around uh, some different options in Excel when working with a cube. And I was asked a question about creating a custom uh, set of data that wasn't necessarily defined in the cube the way it was. At Dashboard Gear, we have a service that we build pre defined data marts, and then we keep them in sync and modify them for customers and so forth. But um, they asked the question of what if the users want to create some uh, sets that don't necessarily want to be put into the cube uh, permanently, but are used maybe for personal reasons or basis, or they do a function like uh, specific types of expenses uh, each month. They can create their own sets. And so what I want to go through today is how to do that. So I'm going to jump on over here to Excel, and we're going to start out with just creating a, a query. Now, many of you have seen me do this many times with uh, connecting to cubes, but I'll, I'll just go to one of my existing connections, and I tend to use the general ledger data because it's uh, the simplest. But if I can create a pivot table uh, on my general ledger data, and I just place some basic information on there, maybe I want my actual general ledger amount. I want to do this for a particular, um, let's say, fiscal year and period. And we'll do um, maybe put the chart of accounts uh, down below on here. So if I do that um, and look at the data, um, maybe there's a certain combination of accounts that I want to look at or a certain combination of amounts. Right now, I have a amount Maybe I want um, a prior year amount, a year-to-date amount, and um, that is how I look at my data always whenever I'm doing P&L type accounts. So I want to save that combination of values off. That's called a set. Now, there's two different ways to build the sets of data. The first is if you come up here to the pivot table menu, and you'll notice there's a section under calculations called field items and sets. If I expand that field items and sets, I can create a set based on row items, based on column items. And then I'm going to show you another way uh, in a minute here to manually do it. But we'll do it based on column items. So I created a pivot table. I got the values that I wanted on there. I'll create the sets based on columns. It's going to show me the things that are on the columns. Now, if I had more than one dimension, it would show all the combinations on there, but I'm just gonna, I just have the one dimension of the different amounts. I can add rows or delete rows, do anything that way. I'll just leave it as such. And maybe I wanna call this my income statement columns, whatever name you wanna give it. Now there's some different options down here that you'll wanna review, but I'm just gonna say, okay. So now, instead of the individual columns on here, it's a set of values called income statement columns. So if I take that off, for instance, and I come back up here and say, I want to see budgets, I can now instead quickly go to one of my sets, you'll notice here, income statement columns, just drop that in. It's going to warn me that it's going to replace the budget amounts that are there because it's the same from the same dimension, It's gonna, it can't... Uh, have a separate item on there. So it's going to say, okay. And it immediately popped up the three values. So any unique combination of either accounts, uh, column headers, anything like that, that you want to create a set and save it off, you can do that. Now there's different ways of saving that off. What I'm showing you is saving it right within this workbook connection itself. So um, just keep that in mind. What I end up doing is create some templates of different combinations and keeping those sets in there. Uh, but you can, you can do it some other ways too, and we'll cover that in a future session. Now, the second way that you create sets is a little more advanced, but also at the same time, a little more powerful. And that is through what's called MDX. Now, some of you that are technical may understand that behind the scenes, when I'm querying a cube, Normally what that does, like if you're querying a SQL database, that issues what's called a SQL command, an SQL command. When you query a cube, what it's doing is issuing a, a syntax called MDX or multiple, multiple dimension expression. 
uh, language. And um, what I'm going to do is instead come up here and create a set. And I'm going to do manage sets. And you'll notice there's one of them in here where I can edit this one that I created or deleted or whatever I want to do. But I'm going to create a new set. Only this time I'm going to create it using MDX or that multiple dimension expression uh, language. So if I do that, it's going to bring up a wizard that allows me to define that. Now I can just type it in here if I know MDX, but I'm going to go at it like um, I don't. MDX is very uh, verbose, so it's a little bit different syntax than most people are used to. But um, what you can do is you can say, I want to see the uh, account hierarchy. I'll just do, um, let's see, what should we do? We'll, we'll do the account hierarchy itself. So I'll do account hierarchy, and then there's different functions, just like in SQL, where you could, you could sum things, you can... Uh, do a dot descendants to see all the descendants and so forth. Um, I'm going to use one that just says all members. And that just means that any members underneath the uh, account hierarchy, it's just going to list all of those. So basically everything, not exactly a, a good set per se, but I just wanted to show you, you can create whatever MDX that you want here. And there's some different options down here that you can review around recalculating and displaying and so forth. But I'm just going to say all members and say, okay. And so now I got my set that I called set one. Actually, I'm going to edit that and call it something else. Let's call this my all account members. Okay. Now I've got my other set and I can close that. So now if I look up here under accounts, because this was all underneath the accounts dimension, it puts that set here. If it would have been a set where I would have had more than one, then it would have put it more into the generic sets uh, area. But I'm going to go up here to the under accounts, my all account members. I'm going to take off my account hierarchy and drop in my all account members. And now what it does is it expands out all my members underneath my uh, account hierarchy. So you can do it by just grabbing members on the pivot table manually, creating sets that way. Or if you know MDX or need to do something more complex than a pivot table can sometimes give you, it allows you to do a lot of things around grouping different things or crossing different levels and combining things. The MDX can be very powerful. Uh, and that wizard will help a little bit with it, but you probably will need to do a little uh, digging if you're not familiar with MDX on how, how to build those. But once you do that, uh, it shows it there. Another way that you can kind of cheat on the MDX is if I go up here to this uh, column members and I say manage sets, if I look at, let's say this income statement columns and I do edit, you'll notice there's an edit MDX. If I do that, um, it's gonna warn me that if I do it as MDX, I can't go back. And so it's a one way item that you're doing MDX. So I'll just say, okay but it's gonna show you the MDX that it generated. So that's one way you can also use to learn MDX is just create a, a pivot table one and then edit the MDX and you can see what it looks like uh, behind the scenes to, to do that. So just a, some little tips on name sets. It's a way that you can take a different combination of members, group them together, give them a name so that you can quickly go back to retrieve those values, refresh them and so forth. So hopefully you found today's uh, session useful and that as you're getting more and more into pivot tables and using them uh, with cubes, uh, you're probably going to need to build up a library of common things, whether it be P&L accounts, legal expenses, whatever your different combinations are that maybe your standard chart hierarchy doesn't account for, name sets are the way to go. So hopefully you found today's uh, interesting and uh, as always, if you do have any suggestions for next time, email them to info at dashboardgear.com. And until next Friday, thanks for listening.